Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start a new chapter. It's three hormones uh, and they are controlled by the hypothalamus. As you can see from the diagram, this is the lower part of the hypothalamus and which is connected to the in, uh, pitch tree gland through the hypophyseal stalk. Uh, pitch tree gland is the master gland of our body and it has got two parts, the anterior pitch tree and the posterior pitch tree. And uh, a vascular region in between is the pars intermedia. Four of important hormones, they are released from the anterior pitch tree. And the two very important hormones, they are released from the posterior pitch tree. Then the anterior pitch tree gland, it contains several different cell types that synthesize and secrete hormones. We have these cells in the present in the anterior pitch tree which secrete these hormones we have the somatotropes which are the largest in number it's about 30 to 40 percent and they secrete growth hormone and then we have corticotropes and they secrete adrenocorticotropic hormones uh, adrenocorticotropic they uh, the growth hormone that stimulate the uh, growth, body growth, and the uh, ACTH that stimulate the production of glucocorticoids and the aldosterone. Uh, then we have the thyrotropes, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, and they uh, stimulate the production of thyroid hormones. Then we have gonadotropes, FSH and LH, which uh, have uh, the role in the development of ovarian follicles and they cause ovulation. Then we have the lactotropes and mammotropes, which secrete prolactin. Prolactin, they secre stimulate the milk secretion and production. As far as the posterior pituitary hormones are concerned, we have two very important hormones, the antidiuretic hormone and the oxytocin. And the nuclei that secrete these hormones, they are not located in the posterior pituitary, but they are located in the hypothalamus. Uh, this, we have the supraoptic nucleus and the paraventricular nucleus. These nuclei, they uh, secrete these hormones. Secretion from the posterior pitch tree is controlled by nerve signals that originate in the hypothalamus and terminate in the posterior pitch tree. That uh, the hormones, they are produced in the hypothalamus and then they are secreted through the nerve fibers in the posterior pitch tree. And other uh, hypothalamic hypophyseal portal vessels, uh, we uh, should know that how the hypothalamus, they control pitch tree secretion. Hypothalamus, they secrete certain factors which are the uh, releasing factors and the inhibitory factors. And these factors, they are produced in the hypo, by the various neurons in the hypothalamus and then they are carried by this hypothalamic hypophyseal portal vessels to the sinuses of the anterior pitch tree. And as I have told you that as far as the posterior pitch tree is concerned, the, the nuclei present in the hypothalamus which secrete ADH and the oxytocin and then they are carried through the nerve fibers in the posterior pitch tree. Okay, uh, as you can see from the diagram that the anterior pitch tree, it is a highly vascular gland where it is supplied by an extensive capillary sinuses and now almost all the blood that come to the sinuses, they first enter through an other uh, capillary plexus which is present in the lower part of the hypothalamus. The lower part is called the median eminence. Here the blood comes and then it goes to the minute blood vessels which are called hypothalamic hypophyseal portal vessels and then eventually they come downward uh, to supply to the sinuses of the anterior pitch tree. And now the hormones releasing factors, uh, also the small arteries, they penetrate the lower part of the hypothalamus and these arteries then they coalesce with each other to form the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal vessels. The hormones, they are produced in, uh, in the hypothalamus and then they are the various uh, uh, releasing hormones and the inhibitory hormones and then they are uh, immediately absorbed into this hypothalamic hypophyseal tract 
and then they are carried into the sinuses of the anterior pitch tree. Okay, in this way, through this portal vessels, hormones uh, are secreted into the anterior pitch tree and through the nerve fibers, the hormones, they are secreted into the posterior pitch tree. Here, the releasing factors are produced and then they come to the anterior pitch tree and um, then they act on the anterior pitch tree cells and then they release further hormones. Now, what are the various uh, stimulatory and inhib inhibitory hormones that are released from the hypothalamus? We have thyrotropin releasing hormone, which acts on the thyrotropes to stimulate the secretion of TSH. Thyrotropes are the cells, I have told you, they are present in the anterior pitch tree cells. Thyrotropes. Uh, th uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone, they act on the thyrotropes to release the TSH. Then gonadotropin releasing hormone, they act on the gonadotropes to release FSH and LH. Then corticotropin releasing hormone, they act on the corticotropes and release ACTH. Then growth hormone releasing hormone, they act on the somatotropes and then they stimulate the secretion of growth hormone. Then growth hormone inhibitory hormone, which is also called as the somatostatin, that inhibit the secretion of growth hormone, again by the somatotropes. Then prolactin inhibiting hormone, which inhibit the synthesis and secretion of prolactin. So these are the various uh, factors, I can say, or the stimulatory and inhibitory hormones released by the hypothalamus. First, the, these hormones are released they go through to through the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal vessels to the anterior pitch tree and then they act on these various cells and then these hormones they are released by the anterior pitch tree they are extremely important hormones okay now the growth hormone is our very first hormone it is a protein derivative with a single polypeptide chain containing 191 amino acids as uh, I have already told you that how the synthesis of a protein hormone takes place, it occurs in the granular endoplasmic reticulum. First, a pre-prohormone is formed, then a prohormone is formed, then uh, in Golgi apparatus, uh, hormones are uh, formed and then they are stored in the secretory vesicles. And when the appropriate signals are reached, then the hormone is released in blood by exocytosis. And as far as the regulation of growth hormone is concerned, the growth hormone releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus, which acts on the anterior pitch tree and cause release of the growth hormone. It is weakly bound to plasma protein in the blood and it is the most important hormone for normal growth to adult size. And what is the mechanism of action? Um, it is. It has the tyrosine kinase associated receptor. It has two binding sites. Growth hormone binds with the extracellular part of the receptor, and the intracellular part of the receptor is uh, the JAK2 is uh, the JAK2 STAT pathway that is excited. And then uh, I can show you in the diagram that it has a two binding sites. The growth hormone binds to the extracellular part of the receptor. This is the growth hormone. And then the JAK2 is stimulated, which calls stimulation of the STAT proteins. And the, these are the activator of transcription factors. And then they cause the protein synthesis. So this is the mechanism of action. And now the functions of growth hormone. The functions of growth hormone, the, very, uh, the first important function is the growth of the body tissue. It causes growth of almost all tissues of the body and it causes increased size of the cells, increased mitosis and specific differentiation of different types of cells. And then uh, regarding the protein metabolism, uh, it increases protein synthesis by all means by increasing the amino acid transport through the cell membrane by enhancing the RNA translation to cause protein synthesis by ribosomes, increasing nuclear transcription of DNA to form RNA and decrease catabolism of protein and amino acids. So by all means, 
this is um, a hormone which increase protein synthesis. As you can see here that when the growth hormone is increased, there will be increased protein synthesis, increased protein storage. Uh, as far as the fat, on the fat metabolism, the effects are, it causes increased lipolysis. And then it on carbohydrate metabolism, as it causes increased insulin secretion, but it also causes increased insulin resistance. We will see how. Uh, as far as the fat metabolism is concerned, it causes increased lipolysis when the fats are broken down lipids are broken down in there will be increased concentration of free fatty acids in the blood and it enhances conversion of fatty acids into the acetyl coa and its subsequent utilization for energy so under the influence of growth hormone fat is used for energy in preference to the carbohydrates or proteins and when uh, there is increased growth hormone, fat mobilization is too great so that much acetoacetic acid is formed by the liver, which are released in the body fluid. So increased uh, acetoacetic acid formation, it may lead to ketosis. And the excess mobilization of fat, they also cause fatty liver. This is important uh, university question that what is fatty liver? So then you should know that when there is ketogenic effect due to the excessive growth hormone, so it may cause the fatty liver. Now as the, uh, regarding the carbohydrate metabolism, it causes decreased glucose uptake into the tissues such as skeletal muscle. It increases glucose production by the liver and it increases insulin secretion. There, uh, there is decreased glucose uptake. Let's uh, see that if there is increased insulin secretion, but insulin is not working. It causes same time the insulin resistance because uh, the effect of insulin is that it transfers glucose into the cells. But there is decreased glucose uptake into the tissues and increased glucose production. So all these um, events, it will lead to insulin resistance. So, uh, so uh, there will be the increased, uh, as there is increased glucose production, so there will be the increased blood glucose level and due to the insulin resistance, there will be the decreased glucose utilization. So it is a diabetogenic hormone. That is, it, if there is excessive growth hormone, it may cause uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus because of the insulin resistance. Insulin is not working uh, properly. So uh, blood glucose level, it is increased. And uh, due to the increased blood glucose level, type 2 diabetes mellitus can occur. Now the next function is regarding the cartilage and the bone growth. It causes increased deposition of protein by the chondrocytic and the osteogenic cells it causes more conversion of chondrocytes to osteogenic cells it stimulates osteoblast which deposit new bone basically it increases due to the growth hormone stimulation long bones they grow in size at the epiphyseal cartilage so it causes uh, in shortly it causes deposition of the new bone it increases the length of the bone at the epiphyseal cartilage Therefore, bone continue to be thicker under the influence of growth hormone. Its length increases plus due to the deposition of new bone, it becomes thicker. Adding the growth hormone, one more point. That the growth hormone, it has been observed that the growth hormone, they fail to cause growth in animals that lack a pancreas. So it shows that adequate insulin activity, it is also necessary for the growth hormone to be effective. Okay, now what are the somatomedins? They are also called insulin-like growth factor. These are the proteins formed by liver under the influence of growth hormone. These proteins have potent effect of increasing bone growth. Okay, it causes increased bone growth. Somatomedin C is the most important, which is uh, insulin-like growth factor 1. The pygmies of Africa, they have congenital inability to form significant amount of somatomedin C. So this apparently accounts for the small stature of these people. 
they are uh, of small stature because they uh, do not produce somatomerin C. This is a protein which are formed by the liver it, under the influence of growth hormone and they have a potent effect of increasing bone growth. Some other drop, levy lorraine drop, also has the same problem. They also don't produce somatomerin C. Somatomerin C attaches, we will see in detail in the clinical disorders uh, when we will study dwarfism uh, about this somatomerin C production. Somatomerin C, they attach strongly to a carrier protein in blood. So it is released slowly from the blood into the tissues. And now uh, this is important. These are, uh, this is also again a university question that what are the various factors that causes regulation or increases growth hormone secretion. These are the factors which stimulate growth hormone secretion and these are the factors they inhibit growth hormone secretion. So uh, whenever there is decreased blood glucose concentration, the growth hormone is secreted. When there is decreased blood free fatty acids, uh, when there is increased blood amino acids, starvation, protein deficiency, trauma, stress, exercise, growth hormone, releasing hormone, and ghrelin. And what are the factors which inhibit growth hormone uh, secretion? This is the increased blood glucose, increased blood free fatty acids, aging, obesity, somatostatin, and somatomedins. But this is the regulation of growth hormone. As we all know that growth hormone releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus. It acts on the interior pitch tree, which causes release of the growth hormone. Then the growth hormone has its various effects. Uh, on um, including lipolysis and others and then they also cause production of insulin-like growth factor from the liver which has an effect on bone and muscle growth. Also there is a growth hormone inhibitory hormone which is called the somatostatin. It again released from the hypothalamus and it inhibits the secretion of growth hormone. Okay. So thank you so much students. This is all for today. We will see the clinical disorders of growth hormone in the next lecture inshallah.